Hi again, boys and girls. I have another story to read to you. I hope you liked the last one. This one is called The Ice Cream Murderer. Whew. Now I love ice cream. I bet you love ice cream. I've never wanted to murder ice cream. I've never wanted to murder anybody for ice cream. <gasps> this sounds like an interesting story. Let's see. Let us get out at Dixie's ice cream stand, Ron said. We can just walk home from there. Ron nudged his friend as if to say, come on, go along with my idea. Doug echoed what Ron had said. Yeah, uh, it's just down the block. And then that way you guys won't have to go out of your way to take us home. Mrs. Wilson looked over at her husband and she saw him barely nod his head. Okay, she said, but you boys go straight home. I don't want your parents worrying about you after we've dropped you off. Mr. Wilson pulled the car into the narrow parking lot and stopped, and Doug and Ron jumped right out. As they scrambled out of the back seat, Doug said, Thanks for taking us to church with you, Mrs. Wilson. See you next time. Mrs. Wilson repeated her instructions, go straight home, but her husband turned around and winked at those boys. He said, That's right, straight home, and don't let that ice cream drip on your clothes in this heat. They all laughed as the Wilsons drove off. Ron turned to Doug and motioned toward the ice cream truck. Do you want something? He asked. Doug rubbed his fingers and thumb together and shook his head. Ron knew what that meant. Doug didn't have any money again. Don't worry, he said. I can buy. With that, the two went off to get in line. What do you want? Ron asked. I want the biggest, chocolatiest milkshake they've got. Doug could practically taste that ice cream chocolate mm, melting in his mouth. This story's making me hungry for ice cream right now. Sorry, man, Ron said. I don't have enough to get you that. How about just an ice cream cone? Oh, okay, Doug said, a little embarrassed. Doug's father couldn't work and his mother didn't make very much money. So Doug didn't have any extra money very often. Oh, well, he thought, plain ice cream cone is better than nothing at all. But then Doug heard what Ron ordered for himself. Ron said, I'll have the largest chocolatiest fudge milkshake. Doug couldn't believe it. That's what I wanted, he thought. He couldn't afford to get it for me, but he can afford to get some for himself. Oh, that makes me so mad at him. Ron always makes me feel like I'm less important and he's better than me. Ron handed Doug the ice cream cone. Thanks. Doug muttered under his breath. Ron took a big swig of his malt and said, oh, mm, this is so good. And with the back of his hand, he wiped a chocolate mustache from his upper lip. Doug looked at his little tiny dip of ice cream and he looked at his friend who had the big milkshake that he had wanted and suddenly he wasn't too happy. And he could feel that unkindness just welling up and coming up inside of him, boiling up towards Ron. Suddenly, he took his ice cream cone and smashed it right into the side of Ron's head. You think you're so much better than me? I don't even like you, he hollered. Without waiting for an answer, he just started to run away. Doug was shaking. He was so upset and he slammed his front door. His father's wheelchair was parked in front of the TV. He heard the sewing machine in the back room and he knew his mother was working on some sewing, trying to earn some extra money. He stood by the door for a minute and looked around at all their worn out furniture in the room. He couldn't help but think of Ron again going to his nicer house. Ooh, he just makes me so mad, he mumbled as he put his Bible on the table. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him a bit. Is that you, Doug? His father said, asking without taking his eyes off the TV. Yeah, Dad, it's me. Give me something to drink in the kitchen, could you? I'm thirsty. Doug grunted. He headed for the kitchen. When he opened the refrigerator door, the cool air felt good. For a quick minute, he thought how good it would have been to just eat that ice cream cone, how good it would have tasted. But then he remembered that chocolate milkshake that Ron got all for himself. Ooh, and he could feel that frustration and anger coming up inside of him again. Next time I see him, I'm just then the phone rang. Doug jumped at the sound and then he said, I'll get it. He called. He was surprised to hear Mrs. Wilson on the other end of the phone. Hi, Doug. I just called to see that you made it home safely. I was a little concerned when 
we don't take you home all the way. I'm home, Doug said rather sharply. Don't worry about me. Mrs. Wilson sounded concerned. Is everything okay, she said. Sure, everything's great, Doug said. But his sarcastic attitude, that means like ornery, smirky kind of an attitude, gave him away. You sound like you're a little upset or maybe even angry, Mrs. Wilson said. Did something happen on the way home? No, Doug blurted. Immediately, he felt kind of bad for lying to his Sunday school teacher. Well, nothing I can't handle anyhow, he said. He tried to undo what was going on in his mind. What do you mean, said Mrs. Wilson? Did you and Ron have a problem? Suddenly, the whole story just came pouring out. He told Mrs. Wilson how Ron always played like he was Mr. Rich Big Bucks and how he always showed how much better and richer he was than Doug. And Doug finally said, Mrs. Wilson, I just can't stand it anymore. I can't stand being around him. I'm sorry, but I think I just hate him now. I wish I had something besides just an ice cream cone to hit him with. Oh, you don't really mean that, Mrs. Wilson said. Doug began to back off a little, but inside he wasn't so sure. It was all building up. Don't worry, Mrs. Wilson, he reassured her. It's just that sometimes he makes me so mad. And all his anger came rushing back. I just want to kill him, he muttered. Doug, Mrs. Wilson scolded. Thou shalt not murder. Remember? Mrs. Wilson was helping them memorize the Ten Commandments in Sunday school. Doug laughed kind of nervously. Don't worry, Mrs. Wilson. I wouldn't really kill him. She interrupted. You don't even have to, she said. You can break that commandment without touching a single part of Iran. Huh? Doug said, sounding confused. I don't understand. How could I do that without touching them? I want you to read a verse for me when you get off of this phone, will you? There was a moment of silence as he thought about it. Then Mrs. Wilson said, Doug, do you hear me? Yes, ma'am, Doug said. Get a pencil, get a paper, so you don't forget. I want you to write this down. He found some paper and pencil in the kitchen. Are you ready, she said. I'm ready, he said. When I hang up, I want you to get your Bible and look up 1 John 3.15. Did you get that? 1 John 3.15, Doug repeated. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Mrs. Wilson said. Now remember, you promised. You'll read it, right? Yes, yes, Doug said, I'll read it. But Mrs. Wilson interrupted again. Then I want you to pray and ask God what he wants you to do next, okay? Doug surrendered. Okay, he said, but I still don't understand how. I'll call you tomorrow right after school, Mrs. Wilson said. On second thought, Mr. Wilson and I are gonna be going out to get an ice cream cone ourselves later. Would you like to go with us? Oh, would I ever, Doug brightened. Mrs. Wilson laughed. Okay, all right. We'll see you about seven in the evening. Oh, she said, you can bring a friend too if you'd like. We'll buy him an ice cream cone. Uh, maybe, maybe not, Doug said. He knew she probably wanted him to invite Ron. Well, whatever you decide, Mrs. Wilson said, but you will read that verse, right? First John 3.15, Doug said to prove he'd written it down. All right, all right, said Mrs. Wilson. We'll see you later. I love you. Doug hung up the phone, took his dad of some juice, then he grabbed his Bible and went to his room. I'm not going to murder anybody, he muttered as he turned the pages. I wonder what she means. Let's see. First John 3.15, and he read the verse. The next night, Mr. Wilson honked the horn outside Doug's house. The front door opened and out ran Doug. Mrs. Wilson looked disappointed to see he was all by himself though. But when he slid into the back seat, Doug had a big smile on his face. Hey, Mr. Wilson, thanks for taking me with you all out for ice cream. What a treat. Would you mind making a quick stop on the way? Ron wants to go with us. Mrs. Wilson jerked her head around to look at him. And when she did, Doug sheepishly smiled and whispered, 1 John 3.15. So I know you're wondering, what does 1 John 
3.15 say? Let's get our Bibles because it's important to know what the Word of God says on these things. 1 John is in the New Testament. 3.15 says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Do you know when Jesus taught, when he was living here on earth, he said, if we think something in our mind, it's almost as if we've done it, if it's something mean to somebody or wrong to somebody. If we have that anger in our heart and we keep that anger in our heart for, towards a person, we keep that anger, it's as if we've murdered that person. That's what the Word of God says. 1 John 3.15, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And we know the Ten Commandments said, thou shalt not kill. God doesn't want us to hate. He finds that very, very serious. If there's somebody that you're struggling with and you think, ooh, they make me so mad and I get so upset with them and you can feel that boiling up inside of you like the boy in our story, be careful. Don't let it build to hate. Ask Jesus to stop it in your mind and in your heart. You can pray and just say, Lord Jesus, I'm really feeling these bad thoughts and feelings toward this person. Please help me not to have these bad thoughts and feelings. And if you've been saved and you have Jesus as your Savior, He will help you when you pray and ask Him to. And maybe you can think of something nice that you do like about that person and something kind that that person has done for you, and it'll help those feelings to go away. We all have feelings like that, but some feelings aren't so good. And so we can't let the bad feelings stay in our mind. We must remember what the Word of God says. Jesus and God don't want us hating anybody. We don't want to be a murderer. We don't want to be an ice cream murderer. So let's remember the lesson from today's story, boys and girls, and not have hate and not have anger and keep it in our hearts towards anyone.